Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. We've got Larry on his phone down there in the Southland. Hi, Larry. Hey, Stuart. Welcome to the land of water. It's been storming all day today here. Wow. Well, we've had a good day, so probably we'll be punished over the weekend or something. (laughs) I tell you what, uh, the people that are going to get punished, I think, are down south. And when I say punished, this is... Uh, A very unusual storm, this Laura. And, uh, Larry, let's jump to this Laura thing, because this is uh, kind of an unusual situation that has developed almost overnight. I mean, they were warning that it might be a one, and they said, well, it might be a two, but probably a one by the time it hit shore. Now they're saying it's probably going to be a five. Um, what do you think is going on down there with this thing? It almost looks well, like weather warfare. Well, I, there's other people out there I've heard today, uh, including Danoon, that's talking uh, uh, hints of weather warfare. And oddly enough, Stuart, and I don't know if you thought about it or not, but uh, now they're making uh, suggestions that this is very close to what happened with Katrina. And guess what? If I'm not wrong, either today or tomorrow is the anniversary of Katrina. Oh, really? Well, I had my suspicions about Katrina for a long time. There was something wrong with that storm, too. Um, and uh, I know um, Steve Quayle and others have warn people and nobody really believes it but even uh william cohen when he was secretary of defense said they that uh, i don't know who he was referring to he didn't really say but i'm i think probably global deep state had the technology even back then to uh, steer hurricanes make them get bigger and bigger et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how much of the oil industry is going to be along that area? I'd have to look it up because I haven't had time yet. Do you know? Well, as I, well as I was listening to uh, the Weather Channel a couple of hours ago, they were making uh, a report on how that it's so ironic that this storm steered where it did because it's aiming right at the heart of the American energy systems. Uh-huh. Well, see, uh, I know a lot of people, it was like 9-11, and uh, you, if you said anything about, well, the Lord uh, was giving a preview of what's coming to the United States of America when the 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers came, and everybody just laughed and said, well, that's not possible, you know, the Lord loves America, blah, 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 blah. If the Lord allows something and doesn't stop it, then uh, he's doing it for a reason. And Katrina? Now, how many years ago was Katrina? Do you remember? Well, I'm not really positive on that. I don't know the date. The Weather Channel was making those calculations, so I didn't even know Katrina was really a now thing. Uh, In other words, the anniversary was now. Uh, but uh, they were talking that. But it, it's been a number of years, but uh, it also was a very energized event. And they're saying this one is a phenomenally – well, actually, uh, Stuart, uh, we had video and, and photographs of the energy of this thing and the atmospheric electromagnetics in action even when it would, before it ever got to Puerto Rico. That's right. Yep, and in fact, we mentioned it on one of the shows about the plasma discharging. Uh, there, are, folks, the plasma discharge events are happening all over the world. Things, very strange things, are beginning to happen, and they are intensifying. And uh, I guess you know we have the models, for example, of comets as uh, dirty snowballs, whereas people like. Um, I can't think of his name right. Uh, 
McKinney, uh, who is a scientist, has long maintained that comets are not dirty snowballs. They're, they are some form of an electrical uh, situation. Uh, I'm not a scientist, so I can't really get into it. But other than that, uh, here's a headline that I want to get into. Unsurvivable storm surge up to 40 miles inland. Folks, unsurvivable. This is, comes from, from the government. Here's the notice. NHC updated. Unsurvivable storm surge with large and destructive waves. And by the way, the waves out there in the Gulf are reaching 40 feet tall and probably bigger now, will cause catastrophic damage from Sea Rim State Park, Texas, to intercoastal city, Louisiana, and uh, including Cal Sisiu and Sabine or Sabine Lakes. Surge could penetrate up to 40 miles inland from the co- immediate coastland. The floodwaters will not fully recede for several days after the storm. Uh, and there's another one, Bulletin. Laura heading towards a Category 5. Now they, this was uh, before. Now this is a 20-foot storm surge. Evacuate coastal Louisiana near Charles, coastal Texas near Beaumont. Now, Larry, I heard something about the interstate is so low that if people haven't left, it'll go underwater. Do you know anything about that? Uh, that's Are they what they were reporting, that, that that interstate in Louisiana that cuts across the uh, coast there, and that's mm-hmm. the, the main way to escape this thing, that uh, if, it, if they have a 20- or 30-foot uh, high surge, It'll overpower, overwhelm even the interstates and all the roads. In other words, it's kind of like Katrina. Remember when Katrina came in, it washed a lot of people out to sea. Yes, thousands, I'm I'm sure. I, we didn't get the full accounting of bodies. It's like when that storm hit the Bahamas. Has anybody figured out how many people died? You, you didn't hear any more about it. It was like, well, it was just a non-event. But the people, the, the news people who went out there, it was devastated. Well, where did all the people go? They didn't get out. Probably out to sea. Who knows? They never will give you the honest death count on any of these things. And this is probably going to be true for uh, Louisiana. I don't know why they lie so much, but then governments don't know how to do anything but lie to the people. That's all they're capable of now because there's no truth in them. They are satanically driven, whether they know it or not, is immaterial. The Bible says they're all satanically driven. Psalm 2, kings and rulers of the earth and uh, fallen humanity. So they don't know how to do anything but lie to you. But if people did not leave, have you heard anything about evacuations? Because they're not reporting on it that I've seen. Uh, well, the Weather Channel is doing most of the talking on uh, data, and they're claiming that uh, a lot of people, hundreds of thousands, are have been ordered out, and that uh, the I, the interstate there was lined. I saw pictures on the Weather Channel of, of I couldn't see how far it was. Trucks and cars packed trying to leave out of there. So you know, there is an evacuation, and a lot of people are leaving, but. Uh, it may be a lot of them get caught, and especially uh, if they're slow to get away. Well, all you got to have is a major accident on the thruway, and they're done. They're locked. There's nothing they can do. Uh, folks, if you live along the coast, don't ever plan on going. Uh, there are back roads or country roads that you can. Uh, my brother got caught in, in, in uh, Houston. I can't remember what the name of the hurricane was, and he got caught on the uh interstate but luckily right by an exit so he took the exit and they took back roads to get out a lot of people didn't and this is one thing that the scientists have always warned about waiting to the last minute jamming on the interstate storage storm surge comes in and kills you 
Uh, we're not talking minor. And Larry, the last report I got, waves were like 40 feet tall. They got to be bigger now. Well, they they have to be bigger because this thing's still out in the uh, Gulf, about 120 miles from the coast as we're talking. They think it'll be in about 11 or 12 o'clock, begin its uh, landfall, and then on into about 3 in the morning or later, you know, for the the backside to begin to come in. But, uh, you know, it's still increasing. Uh, The last I saw, uh, there were winds in it of 175 miles an hour. And that, and also, they're claiming now they're 150 mile an hour sustained winds. So, can you even imagine getting hit with a straight wind that doesn't stop blowing between 150 and 175 miles an hour? No, no, it would devastate anything it hits, let alone the storm surge. Uh, anyway, here's another bulletin at 11:17 a.m. Now, this was uh, from Hal Turner's site. Hurricane Laura is strengthening at an unprecedented rate. Uh, that probably has to do with the electric, electrification of, of uh, Laura. In the plasma events that we were watching, uh, like you said, even before it hit Puerto Rico, the, the lightning was horrific in that storm. Okay, they say expected to reach Category 5 before landfall. Uh, the winds were strengthening. You just gave that figure. National Weather Service now predicting upwards 24 inches of rain within 24 hours around the landfall area. Now, here's the other thing that kind of is wondering about. what You know, the track of this thing goes practically over, I don't know, 10 states? It turns to the right and goes all the way over to the Atlantic. Is that well, so? Uh, what's what's so interesting, Stuart, is I was watching the Weather Channel earlier because you get heavier data from them. They were showing this thing to go be heading after it curves out of Arkansas to head straight to Washington D.C. of all places. Well, maybe that's a message from the Lord. Folks, we are, I know a lot of people just can't believe that the Lord uh, does these kind of things, or he allows them to be done, and uh, he allows it up to a certain point, and then he destroys those who do it. And uh, they do have the technology now to cause a lot of this stuff to happen, and it's simply called weather warfare. And if this is aimed directly at our oil, main oil importing areas, now this should cause a sharp rise in gasoline prices, shouldn't it? Well, I would think, Stuart, because once all of these refineries and and all the uh, energy related, uh, and we're talking about the heart of the industry that this is aiming at, once that shuts completely down. Uh, for this thing to come in, it, it takes weeks to get that back up and running. So there's going to be uh, not only shortages probably at the pump, there are going to be shortages even to transport. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing is <clears throat> not only weather-wise. I got a – somebody sent me an email. Let me read that to you. I was going to read it first, but we got off on something else. Uh, <clears throat> hi, Larry. I think you sent this to me, obviously, from I, – I, uh, I won't say who sent it. Uh, had a dream last night, sitting on a high ridge overlooking cities, when I saw at least 10 nuclear explosions in different places. Called someone on the East Coast to let them know what was happening – While talking to him on the phone, it went dead and all the lights in the cities went out. Then I heard a voice of authority say, prepare, stock up on food. That's when I woke up. Um, We are getting more and more what I would call almost frantic prophecies that people say the Lord told them. And there was one that has been 
a kind of a countdown where it said you have seven weeks to prepare and we're up on the end of that i think on september 1st or close to it let's see what the end of next week is um yeah saturday this saturday this coming saturday the seven weeks is up so it'll be interesting to see that's september 1st um whether a lot of these things are going to come to pass or whether the Lord is uh, trying to shake people up, get them ready to do something. It doesn't seem like it's working much, though, do you think? Well, it doesn't seem to be, Stuart. And, and, you know, I know a lot of people kind of poo-poo uh, dreams and visions and even prophecies. And, and you know, I, for one, you know, actually, Israeli News Live, uh, you know, and I mention him, and some people don't like him at all. I mean, they just t- tell me, I don't want to hear it. And I don't know why they're mad at him. I mean, he tries to be as, uh, I guess you could say, uh, politically correct as he as he can and still stay on YouTube and Brighton and some of the others because he gets kicked off a lot for what he tells. And, yep. you know, he really doesn't spout a lot of doctrine. He just mainly brings news and intelligence, which is, you know, I like intelligence. But uh, people don't want to hear that anymore, it seems. And, and what's so funny, uh, I watched a video this morning of him. He was doing about the hurricanes and, and the riots and, and uh, all of this stuff. And uh, they were they were calling him a false prophet. And I never, ever remember him prophesying anything. All he, but that's what it, people have got so wacko, Stuart. It's like yeah. if you just mention intelligence. And I'm talking intelligence you know, that comes in, then you're a false prophet if it don't happen. They're off the wall, stupid. This is beyond. I never see anything like it, Stuart. Some days I just have to grit my teeth and try to warn the American people the best I can without people just throwing bricks on my head every time I peek up. Yeah, it's, uh, well, they're scared to death. They aren't going to admit it because they have stood in opposition to all this stuff for years and called anybody that warned them idiots, because after all, we're a godly nation, and God would not punish the United States of America. When you tell them who America is, and you can prove it, they won't believe that either, because they don't want to hear about God's judgment. They want good times. They want to eat their brats, watch their TV, and don't bother me with your stuff. I don't want to hear it. Well, good. Live through it. Because that's what's going to happen to all those people who didn't want to hear it. They're going to have to live through hell on earth. And they deserve to live on hell on earth. They deserve it. And the reason I can say that is God is just. And if he's a just God, and he does not bring severe judgment upon the United States and all of its people therein, then he owes apologies to all the other cities and countries that he destroyed. Uh, You know, you can't accept the blessings of the Lord. Give him the finger, turn your back on him, and expect you're going to get more blessings. It doesn't happen that way. (laughs) <laughs> never has happened that way, and it'll never happen in the future that way. So um, a lot of people are going to die. And uh, I was reading a, a, one of the prophecies where the Lord was saying, if, if it been true, a prophecy, that a lot of your loved ones are going to perish in what is coming. Get ready. Brace yourself. You're going to lose a lot of loved ones. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be fairly indiscriminate, I believe. He's going to protect those who he wants to protect for a reason that he only al- alone knows. And uh, it's just too bad to watch uh, the apostate Christian church, which isn't really even a church anymore. I don't know what you'd want to call them. I don't call them a church They are biblically a church because they're called out ones, but they're certainly not the overcomers. They're certainly not the chosen ones. They're totally apostate. And I know I was reading an article, Larry, the other day about these 2,600 big evangelical leaders 
saying, oh, go ahead, take the vaccine. Wear your mask. Don't do, don't be opposing the state. Uh, these are the same people whom Homeland Security has got uh, going into the FEMA camps to calm down the uh, Christians that they turned in to the state. These people, these leaders, are traitors. They are traitors to Jesus Christ. They are traitors to their, um, I guess you could call them followers, uh, the church followers, because they turn them in. And uh, if you read Book of Revelation, they're all unsaved people anyway. So I guess in some ways it doesn't matter. Uh, Breaking. China orders soldiers opposite of Taiwan to write goodbye letters to their families. Uh, (laughs) That sounds to me like war rhetoric and an invasion. What's your take? Yeah, we've been talking about the buildup across from Taiwan for some time for the invasion of Taiwan. And uh, ironically, uh, today even, China was complaining because we had flown, flown a uh, B, uh, let's see, the uh, stealth. Uh, B-1? I, I think yeah, the B-1. It. No, it's, it's the one that's uh, B- it's a spy plane. I can't remember the name of it. But oh, uh, we had flown I, I it over I... the area of the... Uh, you know, Chinese waters where they're having their Navy drills. And Mm -hmm. uh, today I heard they fired live missiles, uh, you know, into that region. So this is ramping up just day by day. I mean, it's one more thing. Uh, You know, of course, uh, I was going to mention too, Stuart, it's very ironic. I watched last night very, very close with the uh, Republican convention, and I was really impressed with the speech by uh, the First Lady Melania Trump. And mm-hmm. I, I, I was really impressed with all of them that speaking, and most of them, uh, through their speeches, mention God, if you can believe it or not. Uh, mm-hmm. They mention God more than I've heard most of the preachers in America mention God in quite a few number <laughs> of years. And what they were ramping on today in the, the press was that they said, even though they said God uh, once or twice in their speech or or mentioned it once, it happened too many times, and uh, that we can't let Trump win. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, do you hear the church up there standing behind him very vocally? No. I, you know, they are, well, what does the Lord say? If the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing but to be trampled on the foot of man. And that's what they're starting to do. I mean, the, the, one of the marker events was the burning of the Bibles out there in Seattle. I didn't hear any outrage from the churches even out there. Uh, people are evidently afraid to speak up or something. Uh, here's another headline I want to get into. Earth appears to be traveling through the debris or de- yeah, debris of ancient supernova, radioactive dust deep beneath the ocean waves suggests that the earth is moving through a massive cloud left behind by an exploded star continuously for the last 33,000 years space has been seeding earth with a rare isotope of iron forged in a supernova well we other people have said we are going to start seeing more and more Uh, meteor events and uh, impacts. Now, whether this space debris could be an armada of UFOs, as some have maybe suggested already, who knows? We're going to find out because the arrival is fairly close at hand. Uh, What else you got, Larry? Well, I was going to mention also it's really interesting that uh, there was a report today <clears throat> from Fact News Network, that NASA was uh, reporting that uh, we're passing through a cloud of debris, and they're calling it a local interstellar cloud. Now, Stuart, what have I said all along? That if they use the term interstellar, they're talking about the destroyer and its entourage. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're talking about. 
And uh, Glazerson just came out with a new one. i got to see if I can find it. Here it is. <clears throat> Here are the words that I didn't. I, he's very hard to understand. And uh, anyway, here are the words on it that are I- interesting. Elisha, return. Well, what do you think of that, Larry? Because that means the witnesses are coming back. It's very interesting. And, and usually with any of those three and a half years. Yeah, and, and <laughs> usually he does them with uh, the word repentance in there, too, showing up. Mm-hmm. Well, this one says, Elijah, return, salvation, redemption, Tishri, year of Messiah, son of Jesse, in 5781, 2021. Now, that's interesting because September 18th, Israel enters 2021. Uh, so you've got in a light that's a witness. Uh, people argue over who all the witnesses are going to be. Uh, I guess we don't really know. We'll, but I think they come with the arrival. That's my take on it. They'll be coming down at about the same time the arrival of the fallen ones comes. Uh, you know, the Lord's going to try and counter uh, their fake message. That you know, it's always interested me that Jesus is. Uh, you know, people. 40 billion light years away, trash Jesus Christ. In the first place, how do they even know the name? People ought to ask those kind of questions. <laughs> so anyway, last words. <clears throat> what do you think? Well, I would just I would just mention that uh, uh, you know I know up there in your state, Wisconsin and Kenosha, they're having lots of problems, and there's yes. a lot of data coming out on the internet today saying that uh, when they had this boy down and you know they had chased him down the street he, he had a firearm trying to protect businesses and they chased him down the street and it doesn't matter who he is he was one of the local militia possibly but they chased him down the street and got him down and was trying to take away his weapon and he fired and uh, what they were saying though the, the, across the internet that was that was a shot heard around the world when that video began to go out. Yeah, I believe this is starting. Remember, it was in Wisconsin, where the biggest flag of the United States of America ever made was ripped into shreds in Sheboygan not very long ago during a severe thunderstorm. And Wisconsin shows up, too, on the zero on uh, uh, the uh, D- Democratic National Convention. Uh, these these should not be called Democrats any longer. They are communists. They are committing high treason. And uh, for Pelosi to say what she said about Trump and Trump followers is treason. The woman should be hung from a lamppost for treason. Not going to happen. She doesn't have to worry about that. It'll probably be the Christians. It'll be the Constitutionalist Bill of Rights that'll be hanging from the lamppost. But we have an awful lot of governors that are communists. We have a lot of mayors that are communists. We have a lot of uh, Wisconsin is uh, run by Comrade Evers. And uh, we're getting mixed reports. Trump said we're coming in. Evers said, I didn't hear anything about that. So I don't know what's going to happen. But it's going to escalate one way or the other. If it doesn't work in Kenosha, they'll do it somewhere else. These guys and gals are bent on having a communist nation. I hope they enjoy it when they get it. Uh, But you can't tell them anything because heads up and locked. And as Larry has said a thousand times, this is a domestic. There is no rational, logical thinking. It's all emotional, and that's what they wanted. And Global Deep State wants a revolution so the U.N. can come in with their blue helmets and America's gone. Anyway, thanks a lot, Larry, for coming on. And we'll try and, if anything happens, we'll certainly let you know tomorrow or Friday night. Anyway, good night, everyone. Take care.